Hello everybody, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Antti Lillebäri and I will be giving you a short presentation about pipette calibration. Why is pipette calibration important? If you work with pipettes doing any liquid handling or if you work in a laboratory instrument uh, in environment using good laboratory practice guidelines or your laboratory has an ISO serious quality system, you must be aware of the accuracy and precision of your pipettes and also the pipettes you are using must be maintained and calibrated according to the manufacturer's instructions. With the pipettes, this means they must be calibrated annually or more often, for example, every six or three months. Pipette calibration can be done by yourself or you can use an external service provider like Sartorius. I will now give a brief presentation about the equipment, the procedures and any possible issues with pipette calibration. For pipette calibration you need some basic tools like a balance. This is very important. A balance should be at least five decimals or six decimals for very small volume pipettes. The balance should have at least a draft shield or an evaporation trap, preferably, that keeps the humidity in the wading area as high as possible to eliminate any evaporation from the water you are pipetting in the balance. Besides the balance, you will need a temperature meter because you need to know the temperature inside the measurement area and the temperature of the water you are pipetting and also you need to know the air pressure in the calibration area. You will need distilled water and the quality of the water is very important for best results in pipette calibration. You will need pipette tips, preferably the manufacturer's original tips because they always give the best accuracy possible for your pipette calibration results. You will need a table, preferably a good sturdy table designed for analytical balances to eliminate any vibration that could affect the balance. Also, the room and the environment you are working in should have a stable temperature and should be draw free so there should be no flow of air through the room. So this is the basic environment and equipment you need for pipette calibration. Now I will explain to you what are other important factors in pipette calibration. Hold the pipette in your hand, either left or right handed, whichever is your stronger hand. Pick up the pipette tips. You do not need to twist when picking up the tips. When you aspirate, which means you draw in the liquid, hold the pipette vertically, press the plunger down, and remember always when moving the plunger, use smooth movements and always at a constant rhythm, so you have a good timing and rhythm in your pipetting. When you place the pipette in the liquid, put the end of the tip two to three millimeters underneath the surface of the liquid. Release the plunger and the pipette draws in the liquid. If you are doing this, uh, hold the pipette vertically, but when you now pipe it out, hold the pipette at an about 45 degree angle and always pipe it against the side of the vessel so that you are touching the vessel wall. So hold the pipette at a 45 degree angle, push down on the plunger, 
against the vessel wall and remember to wipe off any droplets from the end of the tip against the side of the vessel. So this is basic pipetting technique that you must master if you will be doing any pipetting or pipette calibration. Also, what is important in pipette calibration is pre-wetting. So you must pre-wet the pipette three to five times before doing calibration. And this is to eliminate any evaporation of water into the pipette from the liquid you're using. So I will now pre-wet the tip five times, pipetting against the side of the vessel. Now the airspace in the pipette is moist and it will be not evaporating into the pipette. I will replace the tip Pick up a new tip, do a single pre-wetting. Now I'm ready to do pipette calibration. Pipette calibration is done by pipetting liquid 3 to 10 measurements or droplets on the balance at 1 to 3 volumes and from these measurements we can calculate the accuracy and precision of the pipetting results. So I will now pipe it on the balance. I will use a software to record the measurements and to calculate accuracy and precision. One measurement. Second measurement. Third measurement. I have now done four measurements on the balance and I can determine what is the accuracy and position of this pipette. If I would have trouble with the accuracy, so my results could be either low or too high, I could adjust the accuracy of the pipette. Most pipettes can be adjusted with the manufacturer's own calibration tool. I have here a bite pipette and a bite calibration tool, I can adjust the calibration by mounting the calibration tool on the calibration nut on the pipette and turning either clockwise to increase or counterclockwise to decrease the results. If I adjust the calibration of the pipette, I must do a recalibration, I must do the measurements again to make sure my adjustment was correct and the accuracy is now perfectly in place. So this was the basic calibration procedure. Important things to remember is that you need to have the equipment and the environment perfectly in place. When you do pipetting, the biggest source of pipetting error is tip fitting. Either the tips are not correct from, from the original manufacturer or that the tips are, have been reused or possibly the pipette is worn out and can be leaking. Uh, other sources of error are mostly operator related, so you may not be using a correct technique. So always remember to hold the pipe vertically when aspirating at a 45 degree angle when dispensing and always remember to pre-wet the tip and always wipe off any droplets from the end of the tip against the side of the vessel wall. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody. I now gave you a small presentation about fiber calibration. This can be used for your benefit, and you can do it either yourself or you can use an external service provider for any of your calibration needs. Thank you, everybody, for your patience, and have a good day.